Hello and welcome back my friends. Today we're going to be discussing a topic that I don't think I've ever discussed on this channel before. We're going to be talking about how to grow a garden that's not just organic, but beyond organic, better than organic. It's possible, it's easier than you thought. And so with that, let's jump on into it. Organic this, organic that. You see organic everywhere. It's on the signage. It's in the brand names. It's on the restaurant menu. The word organic has really become synonymous with health and the market has really picked up on it. And whether it's produce that you're purchasing from a farmer's market or a supermarket or box products on the shelves that were sourced from organic ingredients, you now have a guarantee through certification that that product was produced organically and with that, you have a greater confidence that what you're consuming is in alignment with your health values, with your moral values, with your environmental values. But what if I told you that when you start growing your own food at home, you can go far beyond that? So real quick, I'll give you a comparison here of your typical organic farm versus what you could be doing in your backyard. So your typical organic farm they're still growing in row crops and they're having to till up the landscape each and every year. They're still spraying crops, but they're doing it with naturally derived products like copper fungicide, neem oil, and these are all approved for organic gardening. But overall, you've still got this commercial operation here that has to meet the demands that are set upon it, and it's doing the best it can and working with what it can under the scope of the design that's been set forth. But at home, you don't have to do the row crops. You don't have to do the yearly tilling. And instead, you can primarily focus on building the highest quality, healthy soil that's gonna facilitate your plant's health, creating the healthiest plants possible, which in turn are gonna feed you all that nutrition. So some gardeners may still decide to have some row crops in their design. And I think that's great. I think it's cool. I might have a few myself this year but the majority of my garden design is more of a polyculture. It's a mixture of plants, all of which are working together in a symbiotic relationship in one way or another, creating a very strong, resilient, healthful garden. The real key here with this style of design is to bring in many perennial plants and have that be the majority of your design. When you bring in perennials, you get reoccurring crops year after year after year, sometimes 20, 30, 40, 50 plus years. We're talking about fruit trees, berry shrubs, medicinal plants as well as ornamental plants. And once you have these varieties established in your garden, there'll no longer be any need to disturb the soil, but rather just continually build the soil by adding to it. And from the top down, as things break down, you'll create the most amazing soil tilth that is conducive to massive plant root growth, proper drainage and water retention. So the materials that helped me to get things underway here that I utilized in my garden were cardboard, wood chips, compost, compost tea, chicken manure, rock dust minerals, biochar, and many years of chop and drop. That's where you chop down an expired plant or a cut and come again plant like comfrey and use that organic bulk material as mulch, which will then continually break down, feeding the soil food web, bringing in the worms, and as those worms come in, they start aerating the soil, leaving behind their castings. And if you really want to take it to another level and you introduce some beneficial fungi, some mycelium into your design, well, that's going to take things to an even higher level. Now, the great thing about this better than organic gardening technique I'm sharing with you is that you can still employ all the same techniques that the professional farmers out there employ. So if you need to treat with copper fungicide, if you need to use neem oil, diatomaceous earth, you have these tools at your disposal. And if you're like me and most other at-home gardeners around the world, and you don't need any sort of organic certification, then you can even implement and use products that aren't necessarily deemed organic, along with all of your other organic amendments and still produce the highest quality produce. So essentially, you're getting the best of both worlds and at the same time, ending up with a higher quality product in the end. That is, if you make soil building your primary focus. 
And early on in your design, more than likely, you're going to need to utilize some of these tools to help keep things in check and balance. But the beautiful thing about a polyculture food forest garden design is that as things continually grow and mature and the design develops, you're going to notice more and more that things start taking care of themselves as nature comes in and balances itself out. For instance, did you know that ladybugs eat aphids? Well, a healthy food forest garden is not going to have a shortage of ladybugs each year in most circumstances. We also have other beneficial insects and predators that come into the garden, like the paper wasp, which people often mistake for yellow jackets. This is actually a friendly wasp that goes around and sucks the juices out of the little caterpillar that comes from those white cabbage moths that you see flying around all your brassicas every year. And then there's the praying mantis, another beneficial that comes in, eats aphids and other insects. It really is quite the sight to see. And as you start to dial into these concepts and these ideas, you start to recognize the benefit in every aspect of what's happening right before you. For instance, where you may have before seen insects like the pill bug or the earwig as being a terrible pest issue in your garden, you start to see how they work in symbiosis with nature breaking down all the dead organic material that's in your garden, and they're helping you to create that amazing soil. Now with that being said, if you do have an overabundance of some of these insects that are actually there helping you, you can treat small areas around your more sensitive annual food crops and keep them protected. But again, keep your eye on the prize, keep moving forward, and just realize as things continue to develop and you tune in to what's happening right there on your particular piece of land, Things are just going to go smoother, get better, and eventually, if you're lucky, you'll start having numerous little volunteer plants coming up that you really enjoy. There's certain things that I no longer need to plant in my garden, whether it's Egyptian walking onions, tree kales, tree collards, or even edible weeds that have benefits like the common mallow. Let's not forget the ground cherries. Have plenty of those every year. So with that being said, I know there are farms out there that are doing everything I mentioned today, and that would be an amazing local business to support. But if you have the ability and the desire to start growing your own food in abundance at home, I say go for it and get ready. Because when you begin to experience the high vibrational frequency, the rich taste, and the abundance of nutrients that comes from a better than organic garden, you're gonna be absolutely blown away. I guarantee it, my friends. And so with that, one more thing. Did you get out to the garden yet today? I hope everyone watching this video today joins me this year with the 10 minute gardening challenge that I'm putting out there every day, weather permitting. If you can get out to the garden or do something in preparation for the garden for 10 minutes every day, I'm telling you that's all it takes for you to grow the most amazing garden of your life. You don't believe me? Put it to the test. And 10 minutes doesn't mean limit yourself to 10 minutes. It means 10 minutes minimum. But watch what happens. A lot of times when you go out there, you're gonna find that you're enjoying yourself and you're in a rhythm, and you may go much longer than that. So enjoy the process, my friends. Take care of yourself, your loved ones. Take care of your health, take care of your garden. Until next time, this is Dan from plantabundance.com. Take care, I'll be talking to you again soon.